Stay all day. Now tuned in to the show where you learn the discipline to show up day after day to do the work, the confidence to put yourself out there boldly and authentically, and the mental toughness to continue showing up, doing the work, putting yourself out there even when the success you've expected to achieve is yet to be achieved. And on top of all this, get a huge dose of personal initiative. What is that? That's that go-getter energy that moves any one of us. You know what I'm talking about. That moves anybody to go make things happen instead of waiting for things to happen. And then what we do is put all this together into one framework. One mindset, one philosophy, one life approach. And we got a bunch of frameworks within it. We've been at a hardcover book about it. We created a university and we got this daily masterclass you're listening to right now. It is called Work On Your Game. My name is Dre Baldwin, also known as Dre All Day, and welcome to the show. And today's topic is how you can create privilege and favor for yourself in life. Now, this is something that I was surprised to see that I hadn't even talked about this topic because I talked about privilege in a few episodes uh, earlier this year, most recently in episode number 1640, why you should be happy that privilege exists. And also episode 1533, how to combat white privilege strategically for a black American. Episode 1071, the privilege of responsibility. And all the way back in 2016, episode number 101 was about positive thinking being a job, not a privilege. Not exactly the same part of the topic, but all of those available to you. You just go to those, uh, you can listen to those episodes. Now, today's topic is about how to create privilege and, f- and favor. And this was sparked by a comment that somebody had left on a post of mine on social media where I was saying that your performance should always outpace your talk. That's all I said in the post. It was one of those meme posts where you just have a, a short little pity saying, I hope it was pity. And this person left that comment and said, yeah, I get what you're saying, Dre, and it's cool, and the stuff you said is helpful over the years, but when you're in this situation of team sports, he was, what the player said, I'm assuming this person is a sports athlete, looking at their profile and the things they were saying, I'm 99% sure I'm correct. They were saying in team sports, like football, baseball, basketball, not everybody gets an opportunity. Only the best players really get a chance to play. And then what they were saying was, I've seen players work their ass off and work really hard, but then they still sit on the bench and they don't get a chance to play in the games. And then this person said, in individual sports like swimming and running and things like that, at least everybody gets a chance and then they get a chance to get you know scholarships and looks and get recruited and scouted and things like that. And looking at this person's, this commentator's profile, They're a track athlete, I'm assuming in high school, maybe because they were talking about getting scholarships and offers. I'm assuming a high school athlete. So young person doesn't quite um, know as much as they think they know. But I understand I was in that situation. and I was the exact same person at a different time. That's why I created this show so I can give you all what nobody was giving me back then. And what I needed to correct them on the same thing I'm going to correct any of you on who may be in this in the same frame of mind as this commentator was slash is whether you're an athlete or not, is this. Here's the correction. All of life, ladies and gentlemen, benefits the best players. It is not sports. It is not limited to sports that the best players get all the benefits. That's all of life. If Wherever you work right now, any of you who works at a company, the best performers at that company are the ones who get the benefits for the most part. Now, are there a few people who may have maneuvered their way into getting benefits that they haven't really earned with their performance? Probably. Uh, there are always a few who can slip through the cracks. And those are usually the ones that get the attention of the complainers who say, well, look at this person. They didn't really earn it, but they're getting all these benefits. But if you look at the entire picture in aggregate, you notice that the best performers are for the most part, people who are getting the most attention or getting the most, not even attention, but the most uh, privileges are people who are the best performers to the victors go to spoils. Ladies and gentlemen, this is just the way that it works in all of life. Sports is merely a microcosm of it. Everything else It works the same way. It works the same in podcasting. It works the same in business. It works the same in name anything. Name anything that you're involved in. Name the five most important things that matter to you in life. Are the best performers the one who get all the privileges? Are the best performers the one who get the favors? Of course they are. This is just the way that it works. Life gives its highest, it gives its most, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? It gives its highest returns to the people who put the best stuff out and put the most stuff out and who are the best at what they do. It's just the way that it works. So what we need to talk about here today is if you're a person who wants benefits, if you want privilege, if you want favor in life, don't complain about, nor should you protest for the crumbs of the benefits to find their way to you down at the bottom of the pyramid. What you need to do is get yourself to the top of the pyramid so that you can get all of those benefits, you can get all the favor, you can get all the the stuff that go to the best players. You can be one of the best players, you can get all that stuff yourself. Now, honestly, if we were to really keep it real, 
this entire show, the entire ethos of working your game, the entire philosophy, the whole business, everything that we do here is based around teaching you how to create this privilege and favor for yourself. But this is a framework within the framework. So we're going to go into a little bit more detail than me just telling you, well, work on your fucking game and then you will have privilege and favor. I'm going to tell you how to do this in a more strategic way and just telling you to work on your game. Work on your game is the answer. But I'm going to get, get strategic here today so that you understand how you can make this work in your favor. If you feel like you have not been getting privilege and favor, you feel like people who are maybe better players than you or more talented than you or maybe they're just performing better than you, they're getting rewards and results that you're not getting. Well, um, I, didn't, I, didn't know that that was, uh, I didn't know that was news to anybody. But apparently it is because somebody left this comment. And I don't think they're the only person who thinks this way. So I'm going to preemptively address this subject just in case there's anybody else who has this this uh, mentality that needs to be adjusted. And I'm going to help you out here today because that's what I do. Point number one, today's topic, once again, is how to create privilege and favor for yourself. Let's ask a question. I'm asking a rhetorical question. I'm going to answer it. Does life cater to the best? The answer is yes. Companies cater to the best, the best workers at the company. Uh, life caters to the people who are best at giving life whatever life is asking for in different areas. Sports. Cater to the best performers. This athlete, you know, the funny thing is the athlete was saying, well, in an individual sport like track, which is what this athlete does, they say, well, you know, at least everybody gets a chance. And I said, well, who gives a damn if everybody gets a chance? You can still be a bum. If you're a bum track runner, even though you got a chance, you're still going to come in last in the race. Why? Because everybody else is faster than you. <laughs> track and field is based on the clock, right? I don't know a lot about track and field, but I do understand that when you run track, Everybody is judged based on their times on the clock. It's not like there are judges. It's not like figure skating where you have judges who get to decide subjectively who was the better figure skater. In track and field, everything is based on the clock. And the clock is based on, that's objective data. Who was the fastest runner? Who was the second fastest? Who was the third fastest? So if there are 20 runners in a race, the person who comes in 20th, yes, they got a great, they got a quote unquote opportunity, but they still got their ass kicked because they're trash. If you're trash in life, it's going to be clear that you're trash whether you got a chance to perform or not. If you didn't get a chance to perform, it's because you were trash at getting your chance. If you get to perform and you come in last, it's because you're trash at performing. Either way, the trash will end up at the bottom of the, the bottom of the scrap heap, ladies and gentlemen. It doesn't matter how you set the game up. If you're trash, it will become obvious eventually that you're trash. And if you're good, it will become obvious eventually that you're good. I mean, this is just the way it works, ladies and gentlemen. Does life cater to the best performers? Yes. So what you need to do is become one of them. Do not try to pull the best performers down. You need to learn how to pull yourself up. And this athlete, I went on to, I responded to their comment and said to them, well, I'm looking at your profile. It looks like you run track. All right, so if you're a trashy runner, you're still going to come in last. Or you think because you got a quote unquote opportunity, that means you're going to get a scholarship. No, you ain't. <laughs> you ain't getting no scholarship. If I go to the race, I'm a college recruiter for a track team at some college. I'm a UCLA track coach. And I go to a, a meet to see a bunch of runners run. I'm not recruiting the person who came in last. I'm recruiting the people who came in first. <laughs> I want the best runners. I don't want the bums who are losing. I don't care. So what? You got an opportunity. That makes you feel like that's, a, that's like a participation trophy. And I understand that. I mean, this kid, who knows? He may be 15, 16, 17 years old. He's coming up in the participation trophy culture where this is a normal thing. I don't come from that era. I come from the era where you earn it. And if you're a bum, it's gonna, you're going to earn that. <laughs> if you're good, you're going to earn that too. All right, this is one area where many people, I'm talking about, we're still on our first point here, the fact that life does cater to the people who are the best. This is one area where many people, especially males and especially male athletes, often exist in this constant state of denial. I'm not saying all males, I'm not saying all male athletes, but when I hear about this, it's usually coming from a male athlete. Now, maybe it's just because I'm a male and a former athlete. So those are the people who are attracted to me and talk to me. Maybe this happens just as much with females who are non-athletes, but those are not usually the people that come my way. Not to say that none of them do, but these are what I'm usually seeing are male athletes. They exist in this state of denial in such that they don't want to admit that their lack of game or lack of performance is usually the biggest problem and the biggest impediment to their success. I hear from male athletes all the time who are telling me, all the time when I hear from a male athlete who's telling me how things are not working in their favor, very rarely do they say the reason things are not working is because my game is coming up short and I'm not performing and I just need to get better. I just need to work on my fucking game. Very rarely do I hear that. Now, that doesn't mean that there aren't people who think it, who still come into my you know, orbit. Those people 
they just go straight to wherever I have something that they can sign up for, something they can listen to, something they can purchase, and they get it, and then they start doing the work. So maybe they don't need to come to me and ask me or tell me anything or to lament or to bitch or complain because they already understand. You know what? I need to get better at my game. I need to get better at my confidence. So let me go get that book on confidence Dre has. I need to get better at discipline. So let me start listening to this show every day. I need to get better at, I need to get more focused. So let me start. Uh, whatever it is, whatever else they can do. Let me get the mirror motivation. Let me go to whopanbook.com and get some of these programs. Let me sign up for this 30 days of discipline course. Let me get on this bulletproof mindset so I can get my mind right. Maybe those people just don't need to even talk about it because they already know they have an issue and they know how to fix it. So when I hear from people, understand they have been filtered out. Usually people are reaching out to me because they think they are. They, first of all, they're not thinking that they need to do something themselves. They're thinking that somebody else needs to do something. So the people who understand that there's something that they need to do, they don't have to reach out to me and send me an email and ask me what they should do because they already know what they need to do. So the people that I'm hearing from as I'm talking through this is like a, it's kind of like a selection bias. By the time they reach out to me, they are denying the fact that it's their lack of game that's causing their situation. And usually I'm able to point this out to them almost immediately as soon as I hear them complaining. Because usually the complaints sound something like they start blaming their coach or they blame their parents or they blame the fact that they're just not getting the same chance as someone else. Or they say something that doesn't really matter, such as I work really hard and I really want it and I'm really dedicated and somebody just needs to give me a chance. In case any of you didn't know, in the adult world, none of that shit matters. Any of you who's under the age of 18 or under the age of 21 and you think those things matter, I'm here to let you know that yes, they matter and that you need to do them. But no, they don't matter and that they do not separate you from anyone else. I've talked about that many times, but I think I'm going to have to keep repeating that over and over again forever simply because either some people forget about it or there are so many people who have been indoctrinated to believe it that I just got to keep saying it to make sure everybody hears it. So any of you heard me say that before, understand you will hear me say it again. When you don't want to admit that your lack of game and or lack of performance is your biggest problem, you will constantly be in a state of denial. You will be constantly be looking on the food on other people's plates, i.e. the people who are getting the rewards that you have not earned through your game and your performance. And you'll always be complaining that something or someone is not giving you what you think you deserve. But you don't deserve shit until you earn it. To blame the system slash coach slash world absolves you of responsibility and makes it seem as if you're doing everything right. It's just that the rest of the world needs to catch up to you. I'm here to let you know bullshit. Let me repeat that. When you are blaming the system, you're blaming your coach, you're blaming the, the world for whatever you don't have, whatever outcomes you are not achieving right now, you are unconsciously absolving yourself of the responsibility to actually fix the situation. And at the same time, you're unconsciously telling yourself that you're doing everything that needs to be done. It's just that the rest of the world just needs to get on your page instead of you getting on the page with the rest of the world. I'm here to call bullshit on that. It is not the world's job to catch up to you. It is your job to understand what's going on, understand what the game is, and learn how to play the game. A lot of people are out here these days uh, wanting the game to catch up to where they are, but you got to catch up to where the game is at. I talked about this in episode number 13, 14, hustle, learning to play the game. You want to be a hustler in life, and everybody needs to be a hustler on some level to get to where you want to get to, because most of us aren't going to have privileges thrown in our laps. We can earn privilege. Most of us aren't going to have it thrown in our laps. You got to be a hustler and learn how to play the game. Again, it's episode 13, 14. I also talked about this in episode number 12, 10. Don't complain, play the game is the title of that episode. And many people are just not playing the game. They're complaining about the game. It was the exact opposite of what I said. Again, episode number 12, 10. Make sure you go look that up and listen to it so you can get your mind in the right space. Understand that while we're still on point number one here, folks, the winners in life get the trophies. And that's the way it's supposed to be. I mean, do, any, do we want it differently? Do we want to change that up? Is anyone listening to this who wants to change that situation that the winners do not get the trophies, that the trophies go to somebody other than the people who actually won? I don't know. I like it like that. The participation trophy culture that is starting to, hopefully is not evolving and getting any, any bigger or more potent these days, but maybe it is. This participation trophy culture of people thinking that just because they did some things that everybody else is doing that they deserve some type of reward for it, like this kid who was allude, like this kid was alluding to in my comment section, this may have you thinking that some cultural shift is happening. In some ways it is, because participation trophy culture didn't exist you know, when I was growing up. 
I mean, there were sometimes they, they, they were there, but it wasn't the whole culture. But I want you to, to not be fooled here. Powerful results producing people will always get the biggest piece of chicken. All right, they'll always get a seat at the head of the table. They will always get favor and privilege or at least a lot more favor and privilege than the people who are not performing. The state of martyrdom was defined as a display of feigned or exaggerated suffering to obtain sympathy or admiration has its limits. Now, what we talk about here on this show or anything that has my name on it, work on your game, we are the exact opposite of martyrdom. Making people know that you're suffering or you're coming up short or you're not getting what you want because you want some sympathy or you want some admiration for the fact that you haven't gotten the thing that you want. Listen, I understand. Maybe you're in a position where you haven't gotten the thing that you want yet. Actually, I think everybody who's listening to this show, there's something that you want that you haven't gotten yet. Otherwise, why would you be listening to a show called Work on Your Game? Who wants to do work if you got everything you want? Who wants to keep working? Nobody. So everybody who listens to this or anything that has my name on it, anything with the work on your game stamp on it, there's something that you're after. Understand something. When you know that there's something you're after, you don't have it yet. Understand that there's something about you, something about your being or something about your execution that has to change. When your being or your execution changes, it will start with the being, then the execution will follow. Then you're going to get different results. Maybe it's not the result you want yet. Now you change the being again. Then you change again. And then we keep working until we figure it out. Now we've created frameworks and processes for you to get through these with a much shorter learning curve. Now all of that is at Work On Your Game University and also through our books at workonyourgame.com slash books. But this is where we start at. You got to be clear that there's something that you want and there's some changes that need to take place. But until you're willing to admit that, you're going to keep having the same problem over and over again. Point number two. Today's topic, once again, is how to create privilege and favor in your life. The second thing you got to do, as I just touched on, is be strategic. What does it mean to be strategic? Maybe you aren't privileged. Let's say when you're, you're a football player. And you aren't one of the privileged players on the football team because you're not one of the good players on the football team. You're just a bum-ass football player. But you're the man on the chess team. Maybe you get treated like a second-class citizen when you try to do stand-up comedy, but you dominate when you're doing coding and doing information technology work. So what you need to do is start playing to your strengths. This is how you create privilege and favor. The best strategy, the most important strategic point I can give to anyone about Creating privilege and favor in your life is this one right here. Play to your strengths. Many times when people are complaining about the fact that they're not getting privilege and favor is because they are trying to force themselves to be good at something that they're just not good at. You are mediocre at doing this thing and you're seeing other people who are actually good at it. They're getting rewards that you're not getting and you're saying, well, they're getting rewards that I'm not getting. Of course, because you're not good. Of course, they're getting rewards that you're not getting. You don't deserve any rewards. You're trash. Why would you get rewards for being a bum? Ain't no rewards for that. It's free to be a bum, but there are no rewards that come with being a bum. In episode number 1104, I addressed this question. Are you a person with untapped potential who just hasn't exposed your potential yet? Or are you a bum who is struggling to be mediocre? Which one are you? Again, it's episode number 1104. I would suggest you go listen to it. Any of you who is wondering whether you're one or the other. This is, this is the, the key question for people to understand whether they should keep trying or they should walk away. I also talked about this in episode number 1662, when to walk away in strength just a week or two ago. Walking away in strength. How do you know when to quit and when to keep going? Or how do you know when to walk away from something because it's just not the thing that you should be doing anymore? In episode number 859, the topic was go to where you're adored, not where you are ignored. Again, it's episode number 859. As you can see, we got a whole library addressing every single issue you could possibly have here. People sometimes in life will try and try and try at a certain thing and they'll keep failing and failing and failing at that thing. All the while, they're complaining that they're not winning or complaining that they're not getting chances in that place. Understand something. Here's the, the most one of the I say a whole lot of real thing. I wasn't going to say the most real thing I could say to you, but I think I say real things to you every day. You are failing because you have no game, bitch. That's why it's not working. The reason you are coming up short is because your game is just not there. Now, if you're trying and trying to something and you continually fail, maybe you should keep going. Maybe you're in the right place. Maybe you just need to keep working. Maybe you need to develop your game. Maybe you just need to step your skills up. When I was playing basketball, I was trying and trying and failing and failing. 
but I kept working on my game. Every time I had a failure, I, I assessed, all right, where am I, where am I weak? How do I need to get better? Do I just need to show up more? Do I need to get more comfortable playing in games? Is this just a certain type of opponent that I'm just not used to playing against? What do I need to do to improve? Never, ever, when I was trying and failing in basketball, getting cut from a high school team three years in a row on the first day of basketball tryouts, walking on at a D3 school and not setting the world on fire even then, not being in the program the last year and a half of my college years, Never did I complain and say, well, I'm just not getting the same opportunities as other people. I'm not getting the chances that other people are getting. Never did it even cross my mind to complain like that. So even though I was trying and failing, I wasn't bitching about it. I was understanding that there was something that I had done or something that I had not done that led to the situation of me trying and failing. Therefore, I because I was willing to take responsibility for that, that trying and failing, I was also empowered to have responsibility over improving and thus getting the outcome that I want. But as soon as I started absolving myself of responsibility by complaining about the situation or complaining about some people involved in the situation or whoever I want to put the blame on, now I have no power anymore because now it's their fault. As long as it's somebody else's fault and somebody else's responsibility, you have no power. And if you have no power, then you're not going to get what you want in life. The only way to get what you want in life is to empower yourself. The way you empower yourself is by taking on as much responsibility as possible for your circumstances. Even if somebody else caused part or is at least partially responsible for your circumstance, the more responsibility you take for it, the more power you have to do something about it. Things are not working for you, maybe because you just aren't performing. Maybe because you just have no game. Maybe you're in the wrong place. Maybe you're in the right place. But either way, you don't have any game. You need to do something about the fact that you're short on game. And this show is called Work On Your Game. So I think you're in the right place at the right time. The question is, do you want to keep listening after what I just said to you? And if somebody, if I'm speaking directly to somebody right now, some of them are going to say, well, I don't want to hear this anymore because this person is, is, they feel like you feel like I might be talking down on you or I'm not encouraging you enough or I'm telling you something that you know, may be discouraging to you. Well, look, fuck it. Sometimes you just got to be told what you're told. And if you can't take hearing this from me, all right, good luck hearing it from good luck hearing from your trainer or good luck hearing from your coach or good luck hearing from a recruiter who's not interested in you or good luck hearing from one of your teammates or an opponent, let alone an opponent who wants to trash you or wants to make you feel bad. I'm trying to tell you something that maybe it might pull you down a little bit mentally in the moment that I'm saying it, but I'm also going to tell you how to fix it. Now, how many episodes have I referred you to already? here today that'll tell you how to fix these same issues that I'm pointing out. I will never on this show point out an issue that you may be having without also telling you how to get it fixed. Never ever. And I never have and I never will. Understand that if things are not working in your favor in the current situation, don't bitch about it. Don't keep banging your head against the concrete wall. Are right? you going to give yourself a concussion and your insurance might not cover some of those self-inflicted wounds. You got to come up with a better strategy and I'm giving it to you right here. This is the second point. Be strategic. Point number three. Today's topic, once again, is how to create privilege and favor in your life. What do you want to be? This is point number three. This is the question. What do you want to be? And this is a serious question. Do you want to be the victim of unfairness who never got your quote unquote chance? Do you want to be the martyr and be celebrated for being a person who came up short and suffered and failed and didn't get what they wanted and everybody just celebrates you for being a failure? Or do you want to be a famous failure? Is that what you want to do? I mean, you can go for it. There, there are opportunities out there for this right now. The, the world that we're living in right now, there is a, a cultural shift where being a martyr and being famous for failing, is there's a space for it. All right? There is an opportunity for you to occupy that, that ground if you want to occupy that. If you do, you probably shouldn't be listening to this show anymore. I'm going to make sure that I don't take any more of your time because you're in the wrong place. There are other people with shows that will help you and really enrich your skill set for becoming a martyr. If that's what you're looking for, this show is not it. However, if you want to find, if you want to be the person who found a sweet spot where the pot of gold awaited you, in other words, the place where you are one of the best so you can get the rewards, then there are some different ways you need to be thinking. You need to change the way that you're being. Then we'll work on the actions. Which one do you want to be? Key question. Which one do you want to be? The famous failure or the person who found the right place? The person who kept looking and trying and working until you found a place that worked right for you. Which one do you want to be? I'll tell you about my book, The Mirror of Motivation, which you can get for free at mirrorofmotivation.com. What's the book about? A lot of people are willing to do the work. If you're listening to this, you are. You have goals. If you're listening to this, you do. question is, who do I need to be? 
When you change who you are being, the actions automatically follow. Now, you might not be able to do the actions. That's why you got the strategies. Once you answer the question, who do you want to be? The next thing is, what would that person do? Then, the next question after that is, what are you doing? And if those two things don't match, what that person would do and what you're doing, then that means your being needs an adjustment. And when your being gets adjusted, then your doing will automatically adjust itself. Question is, are you willing to do that? Question is not if it's the accurate formula. I know it's the accurate formula. I'm proof positive that it is. And we got thousands of results through other people that is proof that it is. Question is not if you're capable of doing it, which you absolutely are, because you chose the being of bitching and complaining. So you can just as easily choose the being of empowering yourself. The question is, are you willing to do it? So this is about the can do versus the want to. And there's a, there's a, what's the word that I'm looking for here? There's a, it's just a question. <laughs> so let's just put it like that. Things that you can do versus things that you want to do. There are a lot of things that we can do, but not everybody wants to do the work. Someone asked me just the other day in one of the, the training calls at Working Your Game University, why is it that some people are just not, why is it that some people just don't put forth the energy to get the outcomes that they want in life, Dre? And my answer was because putting forth energy is work. Not everybody wants to do the work. I told y'all, when I introduced this show and tell them that it's called Work On Your Game, I immediately lose a certain percentage of the audience. The people don't want to do work. Right? You could easily go listen to some entertainment that requires nothing of you. It's passive. But anything that is giving people any type of personal or professional development, now what you heard, you're responsible for doing something with it. That requires effort. That requires energy. That requires work. Human beings are lazy. That's one of the common truths. That's one of the basic fundamental truths about human beings. They are lazy. They don't think. And they don't read. Now, if you keep these three things in mind, you will no longer have existential questions about why people are how they are. People are lazy. They don't think. And they don't read. So if you could be the opposite of that, you can get yourself ahead of 97% of the population. Let's recap today's class, which is how to create privilege and favor in your life. This is sparked by a comment somebody said on a post of mine that said, well, in team sports, only the best players get all the privilege. The correction, in all of life, the best players get all the privilege. So how do you become one? Number one, does life cater to the best? Of course it does. So you need to become one of them. Don't ask about how you can pull them down so that you can get the same that they have. Ask how you can pull yourself up. All right, this is the whole point of work on your fucking game. This is an area where many people, especially males and male athletes, at least these are the ones that I hear from, they exist in this state of denial because they don't want to admit that their lack of game and lack of performance is actually their biggest problem. Instead, they say, well, it's the system or it's life or it's the world or it's the coach. As long as you're bitching about somebody else being a problem, you will always be your own biggest problem. Results producing people will always get the biggest piece of chicken. Being a martyr, displaying a feigned or exaggerated suffering to obtain sympathy or admiration has its limits you can try it but it is limited point number two be strategic maybe you aren't the best on the football team but you'd be great on the chess team maybe you're treated like a second class citizen doing comedy but you dominate in the it world so learn how to play to your strengths in episode number 1662 i told you how to when to walk away in strength episode 18 859 go where you're adored not where you are ignored if you're trying and trying and failing and failing, you can either decide that that's because you lack game, which is probably the case, and you can choose to either keep working on your game or you can take the game that you have and take it to a different arena where maybe you'd be an instant hit. But you have to decide what you're going to do about it that you can do, thing that you are empowered to do, not that you're going to complain about. Complaining is not empowering. Point number three, what do you want to be? Do you want to be the victim of unfairness who never got your chance or do you want to be the person who found a sweet spot where there was a pot of gold at the end of that rainbow waiting just for you. Which one do you want to be? Once you answer the question, ask yourself, what would that person do? All right, if you want to be the empowered person, ask yourself, what would an empowered person do in this situation? Then look in the mirror and ask yourself, what are you doing in this situation? And if those two things don't match, then you know what you need to do. And if you're not quite sure exactly what to do or you're not quite sure exactly how to do it, what I suggest that you do is join us at Work On Your Game University so we can help you do three specific things. First of all, get clear in developing your game, whatever that game needs to be. Number two, get you the opportunities 
and then helping you show your game, which is the second step. And then the third one is getting the return on investment for your game. In other words, the attention, the favor, the privilege, the rewards, the trophies, the money, the girls, the likes, whatever it is that you want, getting the ROI for your game. Those are the three things we do at Work On Your Game University. And we have frameworks and systems and processes in place to show you exactly how it's done. Doesn't matter who you are, where you're coming from, or what arena you are working in. Join us at WorkOnYourGameUniversity.com. Work on your game. Dre all day.